Hey guys, welcome to the Survival Show Podcast, where it's our job to take you step-by-step through the mindset, skills, tactics, and gear you need to survive almost any disaster, crisis, or emergency. And our hope is that by the end of this show, you're more equipped, more well-prepared for life, survival, and preparedness than you are right now at the beginning. Hey guys, welcome to, I guess this is like kind of our first official YouTube uh, multi-platform and video podcast, and today we've got a special guest host with us, James Asbury. James, uh, he is in the top, I'm going to put him in the top 20 most interesting men that I have ever met, and we decided that he, nobody has been on anything Ultimate Survival Tips uh or the Survival Show podcast. Nobody has been on who I've known longer than James. I literally met him when I moved back to Pennsylvania, which is my home state, and the region that we live in. We're now on my porch in the beautiful, endless mountains of north central Pennsylvania. But uh, James is a pretty interesting dude, and we've <laughs> literally been talking about having him on the podcast for like three years and having him do some videos with me. Because we sort of kind of like spin off, and before we know, we've solved the world's problems almost, <laughs> right? Good and we've had an interesting conversation because James is an interesting guy. James, welcome to the podcast, hey, dude. thanks. This is great. We <laughs> talked about this forever. I just had to get in town when... <laughs> right. So a little backstory, and I'm going to let James go ahead and take it, which may take the whole podcast here. We'll oh. run two podcasts on giving some backstory, but just to kind of preface it, um, he'll have some stories about like how we met, I'm sure. I have a few. But James is a is a master. There's probably some other like Grand Pooba or something uh, of stonemasons. Uh, I'm good. I have not achieved master. Got to stop you there. Okay, okay. Um, so he's he's a stone mason. He's an observer of everything, and we're actually going to talk about that. We'll we'll preface that saying we're going to talk about some situational awareness and. Uh, how just being an observational person right. can help you in life, preparedness, uh, just your job skills, everything, right? Right, exactly. And, uh, and so he's a professional stonemason. Mason. He's got a, a great blog on Substack. Uh, he's run a newspaper before. He's got many, many, many different talented stack talents. Stack your talents. Stack, <laughs> stack right. your talents. Right, right, stack. right, stacking. We talk about stacking a lot. In the podcast, so like you know, just right on, just stack it up, right? So today we're going to stack up some some cool stuff, hopefully, and some uh, observational, situational awareness, how that applies to life and everything. So, James, I've talked. I probably this will probably what? be about it. Okay, James, <laughs> I'll ask him a question, and then the last thing I'll say is, James, Shut thanks up. for being on the <laughs> podcast. Hey, <laughs> how do we find you? So, this is great, man. This so, is great. So anyway, James, uh, share a little bit. Like you can share as much as you want of the back of your backstory and uh we'll go from there and oh before we get going yeah how you guys like my leg all right dude that is a fat it it matches your crocs so i I guess maybe maybe at the beginning (laughs) do i I do have a croc (laughs) on? i I, I don't know (laughs) all right so so, i'm just glad you're okay i'm so a lot of guys are wondering where i've been where we've been with the podcast and everything i had a motorcycle accident and have had uh pretty significant surgery on my fibula which is now attached to my tibia and uh yeah you know another two to three months yeah anyway (laughs) so welcome (laughs) welcome to my booty and we were gonna do iron man booty we were gonna do this the day after you did that and I, text I don't know. I think I was still on meds. <laughs> you were still on meds, and I text you, hey, <laughs> hey I'll, I'll be over tomorrow at this time, and I get an x-ray picture with this, like, broken leg. Uh, is that you? Is Who is in this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'll make plans oh, for, for another time. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, so uh, if you're wondering, yeah, there we go. Yep. There we go. Um so cool, James. So, uh, go yes. ahead and give us some backstory. Take us wherever you want to go. You can go back to your earliest childhood memory. Do do it, man. Just yeah. 40, 
44 years ago. <laughs> no. We You're still it. a pup. <laughs> I am still a pup. We're both gray, but <laughs> no. I, in and, my eyebrows. And, and this in is, my beard, which you will never see. And I'm, I'm younger Because my than, wife hates it. I'm, yes, <laughs> mine too. And <laughs> we can't see your gray. Go ahead, peel that cap off, man. No, you can't do it without messing up your. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Wait, is there any hair there? There's still some. <laughs> Love you too. Oh man, man. And this I'm, is sorry, our I'm sorry. Relationship. Ellie, pl- please, please cut that from the podcast. Okay, go ahead. I've interrupted <laughs> you shine enough. Was terrible. It is your turn to interrupt it me. Is my, go ahead. And, and this is our relationship because 20, 26 years ago. Are you serious? That long? Yeah. Yeah, I was I was a senior in high school. Yes, I'm a young kid. I was a senior in high school. I remember the first school. time I noticed you, but well, go ahead. Well, yeah, I remember because I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing a menial task for this company where, you know, I'm the new guy and nobody's talking to me and I reach for a garbage can under a desk and he said, hi. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, the, the, the whole, I, I was invisible, <clears throat> excuse me, I was invisible for like three hours. And I get all the way to the back of this building, and there's this dude with the spiky hair and some interesting uh, tactical and the things. sunglasses. And the sunglasses, and I'm being. I ignored. did not have the sunglasses. Oh, we and by the way, let me Don't know. Should I wear the? Them. Should I wear the sunglasses in podcasts? That's the question. I think, okay, I think you should. I okay, let us know in the comments. It's, yes, <laughs> put in the comments. Okay, so I was in sunglasses, and I was had spiky hair. Yeah, not much different than now. No, you're except yeah, for gray you're, eyebrows. You're you. Uh, yeah, like four hairs. Don't count those. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but then, I mean, from there, we've we've worked on projects together. And I remember when you told me you were buying a house and all the work you put into your home and all these cool things. I remember you singing. Remember there was nothing in there? You don't remember that? No, oh, man. You came in the house and you're like, well, what do you think of this? Because I'm a builder. and I'm I was a- singing? You don't remember that? Oh, my gosh. That was one of the most cool things in my life was you brought in a stool. I don't remember nothing- what I had for lunch yesterday, dude. I mind like a steel trap. But then again, I, I come in. There was you and my wife. Yeah. And and you're like, I'm going to sing. And you started singing praise songs and stuff. You were so happy that you were finally going to have your, your dream come true and i remember that because i'm a mason so there's a lot of exposed concrete and the acoustics were really cool and i'm like i'm just gonna sit here and you were doing your thing and you're you know was, yeah i remember that okay and now look at this place i huh. mean you've built this it was 20 that, that was like 24 years ago oh it was epic nice. Oh, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> like, it sounds like I was like a, a pretty okay but, human being. But then at the same time, <laughs> but then at the same time, this is the guy that, that will wake me up at four thirty in the morning with an idea and say, "Hey, doofus, check this." Out. <laughs> I don't think I've ever called you doofus. No, but jerk. That was the other. That was. <laughs> but that was you that's, probably deserved it. That's friendship. <laughs> that's what guys are pals. Is when you bust chops and then other people are like, "Do you like each other?" Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it goes back a long way, man. And you've done amazing stuff. And I've learned a lot from you. And, you know, even if I'm not in the same, you know, path per se. Dude, I've stacked rocks for you. I've remember when you, you were like, oh. dude, I need help palletizing rocks. And we went, oh, out, wow. we went out to these like snake infested <laughs> <laughs> outer, outer boundaries of dude. our county to yeah. stack rocks. Yeah. Yes. And uh, the I house- love stacking rocks, actually. You do? If anybody wants to buy this business, I would go and I would come work for you <laughs> at least like once a month. And some of the places I get to go now, you would find quite fascinating. <laughs> okay, this is your time. This is your my story. Time. This is your story. Well, I mean, like, you know, good grief. I've gotten to travel all over the country for the last 25, 26 years. I was 19 when I started this business, and now my vocation is traveling and wandering. I'm a journeyman stone cutter. I haven't achieved master. You are a wanderer. I yes, and I've tried to get out of it, and there's some energy that wants me to stay in it. But you know, like I, I get to work for some amazing clients. I get to do some amazing things and and learn from where I go. I don't just go. It's not my practice to just go and put rocks up. And I, when I come to a new place, and I was in ten states in uh, 2022, um, it's you know what is there to learn, and and all these different kinds of people and and different habits and some are good some are bad and you just observe and you you're a sponge uh i'm um i'm a vessel not a pitcher you know i'm a traveler not a tourist an open road an open mind and a journeyman's life for me so you're just going out through your trade you're going out in the world but you're also soaking in you're trying to learn how to make 
you know, your own self better. So you're stacking, like we were saying, you're stacking talents. You're not uh, one dimensional. Stacking talents, stacking experiences. Yes. Stacking friendships. Stacking friendships. Also, uh, you know. I, so what do you mean by stacking? Just explain that. Maybe. Okay. So for example, I. Uh, I'm a stonemason, but I also have a. a <laughs> it actually team. goes with stacking stones. It does. Oh, yeah. Is well, that intentional? Yes. Okay. <laughs> there's a, there's right. a lot of metaphors in our thing, um, but yes, I mean I cover my joints pretty well. But in that, I like for example, I've always got a plan B. Like the the housing crisis you mentioned, I started a newspaper. So you know the the housing crisis happened in not OA. just any newspaper. It was a newspaper on what? Oil and gas. Oil and gas. What? I mean, you were ahead of the curve, really. I, yeah, you know, and that. Okay, don't you don't have to go down that bunny well, trail. No, go ahead. No, but that's... Go ahead. You're stacking. Yeah. So okay, we'll come back. We'll we'll circle back to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <But> anyway, <laughs> it's like so you you go someplace, you observe things, you learn how to to observe what's going on, and making friends is good, but also learning, you know, uh, who you don't want to be around. Sure. How, how sure, to yeah. avoid. Uh, how to I, not run your business? How to I, not treat people? I did. I did a job last October. One of the lessons I came away from that with was I should have realized that this Hollywood type individual who was nowhere near here, um, I, I should have smelled a rat. And I mean that job experience, the way that I was treated once I got my job, my tools on site, I should have walked. And now I know somebody talks to me a certain way, sounded all sugary and. You know, you'll ha and then I get there, and it's like, uh, so yeah, you get a little bit of street smarts in this thing, but then to go back to stacking talents, you know, I've got, I've got a background in uh, heavy construction equipment operation and a background in small business management. Crash of two thousand eight happens. I've got a plan, you know, to compare it to your bug out bag. I had a professional plan because in two thousand six I was working in Virginia, and people are talking about flipping houses. <clears throat> this doesn't sound sustainable. And I'm talking mm, to customers mm -hmm. in State College uh, way back in 2006. And they're, oh, yeah, we're spending all of our savings. Our kids aren't going to inherit anything. We bought a second house. We bought a boat. You know, the heck with it. Ooh, I think I need a second plan here. So, in, right. you know, as a tradesperson, I've got a professional bug out bag to try to use your oh, that's lingo. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. You know, that works. Sure. Um, and there's, you're always stacking talents. Like, for example, if I broke my leg, what would I do? <laughs> you know, right? Get crutches and a uh, and a leg splint, right? And then <laughs> right. and then you know network. leg crutch, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or lots of help. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting to see you hobbling around here like a pirate. Yeah, yeah. Except, you know, you got both eyes covered instead of one. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me just pause right there. So yeah, uh, just stacking and having mult. So we talk about pace plan a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Primary, alternative, contingency, and emergency. So like a kind of like a five tier plan yes. and if you get to two three and four tiers like even with your income your job your family you know what happens if uh, we had Tyler Tyler White on who very very expertly recently just talked about like when you're prepared you can kind of set it and forget it knowing that you have a plan in place and everybody that's important to you knows what that plan is and now you can just go live your life right right well I mean, you sort still, of. You, you got to maintain it, but yeah. It, anyway, so just pace yeah. plan. I wanted to kind of yeah. integrate that back into your because right. you're talking about stacking. Like, what do I do if? Yes. Uh, back yes. to your story. Like, hey, you know, this fell through, or the the oil and gas industry changed, and then right, and then equipment selling and buying changed, and like, right. so what are you going to do? Right. Exactly. Your heart's always been in stacking stones. Oh, though. and and I love it, and I I don't <laughs> just love it for what I get to build or or the awesome customers that I have it's this traveling roving wandering because this this before before World War II this was the way you had an apprenticeship you you worked under someone's tutelage focusing on your job that's the foundation of your life this is how I support myself this is how it's done that's the only thing you think about then there's the journeyman phase well my grandfather mm -hmm. he spent you know, when he started having kids, he spent several years traveling, traveling all over right. Pennsylvania, doing, doing various different jobs until right. he landed a, a very stable job for the rest of his life at a steel mill. At the steel mill, yeah. right? And uh, so that was that was just part of of 
you know, potentially that was right. a plan. If you right. lost your job at the store, then you would travel to, to do work right. and hopefully be able to visit your family every weekend. And then, and, but then on like with our philosophy, with our thing, the way that it works is you're not just traveling. See, like many people misunderstand, and this is what I talk about in, uh, in my blog uh, on Substack is you, I'm not just going out there to, to travel. I'm going out there to learn and then bring home. So the apprentice isn't allowed to leave. Focus on your, your, your lessons, kid. Okay, this is how we lay a stone, or this is how we make candles or brooms or whatever your apprenticeship is in. But when you go away, you're not allowed to come home. It's two years away, and you, you can't come within 60 kilometers of home. You cannot contact anybody. If, you're, if your mother's okay. sick. So it's, more, it's more immersive is what you're talking yes, about. Yes, and you, yeah. are, you are to leave, and you are to... And this, is, this was one of the best things I ever got out of my career because my first waltz was New York City. And everybody, everybody in my world was, why do you want to go there? You know, you, you live on a farm. Like, why, why do you want? Well, I don't know if I've never, you know, if I've never been for myself. I don't want somebody else to tell me. And I love it. I don't want to live there. But I loved my New York City experience. I got to share things with other people, open minds. It's a cultural, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a f- two way cultural experience. In yes. A sense, if you let it be that. Yes. So you're not just going somewhere to make more money and you're not just going somewhere to, to find yourself. Um, you know, you're, you're going somewhere. Uh, here's an example. Uh, Matthew Stillman uh, is my client in New York City and he's a dear, 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 dear friend. I love it. Just love the guy. He's very important to me. One of the first nights he said, where do you want to go to dinner? We go to, you know, Russian tea room. We go here. This is not where guys like me go to dinner every night. Like, I know you want to, you know, show me some interesting stuff, but where does a guy in Dusty Carhartts go to dinner when he lives in New York City? We went to the coolest little restaurant that was, like, no wider than your deck, built between two buildings. Mm-hmm. They just put some beams up. And this is the immersion experience of this is where a guy like me goes to eat every day. And now I know I didn't. I didn't search for it online. Somebody didn't tell. Me. I was right, right. there, you know. All right. And you were I, almost like mentored into like, hey, I know a great place to go in yes. New York City now, right? Yes. So then you can pass that on, like here, right? Exactly. Yep. yep. Exactly. So it's a, and and you go and you pick stuff up, and some you keep, and some you toss aside. But then hopefully you bring that back home. And this goes all the way back to just after the plague, after the Black Plague. This was when this practice started. James is a historian too. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I am. Yeah, you're hope. You're a hopeless, <laughs> hopelessly uh, immersed <laughs> historian. If, if I jump back to like 1620 and throw, don't be surprised. You were warned. Yeah. Um, he's he's also a Civil War an actor. Uh, yeah, I haven't picked up a musket in a few years, but I'm literally on a T-shirt they sell in Gettysburg now. <laughs> nice. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> but I mean, that's that's the concept, you know. And New York City was my first real waltz away, and then. You know, I've been, I've lived with Carmelite nuns. Um, I've lived with people that politically and theologically completely disagreed with me, but I don't. You've judge. lived at a Carmelite nun I did two monastery years in Fairfield. You didn't Hunter. live with them. You lived well, at. Well, <laughs> I lived. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, yeah. Li- I lived on the property. Just to clarify, but I w- yes, to clarify. But then I was really close to them. Like I would go and ring the bell, and sure. you know, what do you need, and you know, and get get a. But then I was surrounded by people that, I mean. It was a historic site, and, the, and whoever was donating right. the, the money, what you did there was astounding. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and let me just, let me just, I'm just going to pop in here. <laughs> the reason, the reason, my, from my perspective, the reason that um, I have friends, not that I have friends like James, but the reason that um, James is able to meet very interesting people is because... He doesn't take, he just, he gives back. And what he puts his hand at, from my perspective, he's done with excellence. So like, yeah, he's a stone mason, mason. he stacks stones, but he has he has a certification, he's, he has the qualifications, he's done the time stacking rocks at Gettysburg and everything else right. to to be known, be known in that industry. And when people who have money and property and, and things like that require... Uh, qualified people that they know they can trust to do uh kind of like a certified job on their mm-hmm. on their uh on on their property whatever they can call people like james yeah i mean i, I started with the dry stone Wong association of great there you britain go. and got see that we don't always cert- fight 
We never fight. We just bust each other's chops, <laughs> which, is what, which is what guys do. Um, and, and, you know, and then, like, again, going back to stacking talents and what you just said, it's, it's also getting your name out there. You know, it's not enough to just do a good job. Right. You know, you have to – I mean, we are – what we're doing right now, if you had gone back 26 years to the, to the younger versions of us and me and holding a garbage can and, and you're doing what you were doing at your desk, to now talking to you – Around the world, right? You know, it's and so many people think, oh, well, I'm good at my trade. I'll always have work. Mm, is that your plan? Maybe call that's a, a lo- that's kind of like a one tier plan. Is it right? Right? Yeah. You know, and well, get your name out. There. That's your primary, right? Yeah. You know, get diversify. Diversify. Yes. Learn how different things work, so you can stop in and do a podcast in a beautiful sunny backyard in pennsylvania and just yeah just yeah. just a little little tip there find something that what uh, if you can something that you enjoy something that people say you're good at right and something that brings value to other people Absolutely. if you can combine those and you do it with excellence right you've got somewhere to go right well and i mean like what you do i remember when you i remember your first day when you started this and how far you've come with what you're doing and you're telling me this stuff and i didn't I didn't necessarily have the vision for it, but I remember thinking, okay, I'm, I'm trying to follow along, and then here we are. Right, right. You know, providing all this great information. You, you're annoying when you talk about knives. I mean, you talk about knives like I talk about rocks. We're always talking about knives. You're always talking knives? about your next idea. Knives. 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 Thank you for letting me borrow that knife, by the way. <laughs> you were not supposed to use it. So, okay. So, here's, <laughs> so, so I'm going to jump in. It's over there because I couldn't even show. So... Um, our most popular kind of like custom knife is the MSK1 Warrior, triple edged. We've got the primary, we've got the the sharpened edge on the top, and the serrated. Really popular, and we sell out. We already, we could. Anyway, here's the thing. <laughs> I keep back a couple, right? So I literally had one brand spanking new one, and James wanted to take it to show some of his clients that he's working on now and trust me it was worth me giving it to him but he wasn't supposed to use it so he used it to put it back this morning <laughs> and it's all marked up and everything and so I, I anyway Gabe carpet, went carpenter's pencil Gabe went and found one in my secret stash and brought this one here anyway go ahead I love you man like, what did you do what it's you weren't lead. supposed to use this <laughs> it's like I chopped a rock with it or something okay story number two so we've got the new pack one knife right that is nice that is nice so he was like, hey, can I borrow that for like a week or two? And I said, sure, just remember, that's my knife. So what did he say this morning? Oh, you want that back? Isn't that mine? <laughs> nice. You, you said nice. you could have that. Okay. I have witnesses for okay. breakfast. So we already have on record from your earliest memory stories of me that I don't remember, but <laughs> thank you. Thank you for picking the good ones out of the whole pile of the other ones. <laughs> and, and so who's got the well, better memory? So we'll, we're going to side on yours. I probably did say, yes, you can keep it. Yes, <laughs> you keep it. <laughs> I tell everybody. You know, and when you have friends that have If you like it, you can have it. Like it. I love it. Okay. Cause, I mean, if you want to be on this podcast, let me know. I will give you a pack one knife if we can if we get you here and you anybody okay <laughs> if you're as interesting as James you come on out I'll I'll send you a secret encrypted coded <laughs> message on where our our bunker and location is and you'll be sworn to secrecy it's and you can sit right there and we'll have a conversation I'll, get, I'll hand you a pack one okay <laughs> <laughs> but- well, you know, you talk All right, okay, back to you. This is about you. This is your story. Me. Where are we anyway? <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> well, I was just going to... Observa- we're, we're talking the, about the yeah, stacking and observational awareness and, well, yeah, and, and being a better person. Right, being a better... And, better and human that's, being. That's, that's my philosophy on James, a James, you're a basis. way better human being now than you were 10 years ago. Well, And uh, hopefully, hopefully I am, Hopefully we too. all are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, I mean, you, you think about a stone. Yeah. yeah. You think about a stone and it's gnarly... Or, excuse me, I got I to gotta go... I gotta be. Um, You're writing chapters of your book right now. I can I can see this. You're I gonna play back this podcast and have it transcribed. Absolutely. Go ahead. Um, and and then spell check. <laughs> <laughs> but I gotta step back. AI take, AI uh, grammar check. Absolutely. Right. Tools. Learning how to use tools. But you take a chunk of a rock, Rocks. which is useless, and you cleft off and you cleave off and you look at it and you, well, if I do this and I do that and you're looking at all the angles of it and then you finally put your tools on it and you make it a useful stone 
because that's the difference. A rock is what you pick out of a cornfield to ruin okay. a kid's summer right. day. It's and like the difference so between dirt and soil, right? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, we can all look back, and if we're mature, we can look back on things about ourselves that, you know, we, we wish we did do, didn't do, should have said. But that's the, that's the waltz. That's the process. That's why uh, journeyman stonecutters, I take a stone from the last job to the next job. How do many you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So is it like pocket size or is it like a legit stone that you put in the back of your truck? One, there's one job where I had a meaningful back job and a meaningful job I was going to. So I brought home a bowling ball. Okay. But uh, right now. A I bowling have, ball of a stone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so like was, a more, more of a round stone. Yeah. And granite. Around it. Okay. Big, heavy, dense. Okay. Nice. But where it was going was meaningful. Now, right now in my kit, I've got a stone from a decorated Vietnam veteran, and I've got a stone from one of the uh, residents of Robert E. Lee, which also happens to be where most of our past presidents have stayed. Okay, nice. The place where this is going is a dedicated, uh, is a decorated veteran with some amazing accomplishments who has treated me exceptionally well. So... It suits. I don't know how the stars lined up this way, but those were my last two projects, the Lee home and uh, the the Vietnam veterans uh, resting place where I did restorations. And those two rocks were in my kit. And now they're going in the uh, architecture that I'm doing for this. And they truly appreciate it. We're actually having a ceremony because another tradition is woman of the house always lays a stone. So like if I do work for hmm. you, you know, she's going to come over, your wife will come over, your daughter will come over, whatever, and actually put a stone in there. It's a good luck thing. But one stone goes from the past job to the next job, and then a stone goes to the next job, and it's an evolution of your career. How many walls have I built? One. Okay, in a minute, I'm going to ask you just kind of like how this whole connectiveness to your stones, like what that means and how we can apply it to your life. But before we do that, I just want to encourage you guys to go over to ultimatesurvivaltips.com. Just check it out, all right? Just go over there. Uh, sign up for my free EMAG newsletter. I'm not going to pester you. Once or twice a week, you're going to get some helpful tips, some sweet deals on the gear and knives, kits, nice. guides that we, that we have. You can pick up the notes for these podcasts uh, and a whole lot more. But just pay it forward also. Just... Uh, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the YouTube channel, wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching. Do that. Pay it forward and share this podcast with one person. That would really help us out a lot. Uh, that's awesome. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And also in the comments, just suggest guests you would like me to have. Uh, suggest how we can do this better, whether you like my sunglasses or not. Not sunglasses. Uh, and if we should have James back or if, like he's just a bore. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dude. back to you, James. Don't don't take a glass. That's like weird. That's you know. So that that's at ultimatesurvivaltips.com. Yeah. Thank you, thank you guys for I, your encouragement over all these years. Thank you for our longtime followers. I get notes all the time from guys who are like, "Dude, I I've been with you since the beginning. I remember those Bear Girls videos you did way back." So anyway, thank you guys. You are awesome. I do this for you guys. Hopefully, you find this content helpful. If you do, I actually. About those. Actually, that. this podcast, dude, like if you search survival, mm -hmm. uh, survival and podcasts or survival podcasts, we come up like one, two or three in all the major mm -hmm. podcast platforms. So that's really kind of sweet. And it's because of you guys leaving reviews and and uh, all that sort of kind of well, stuff. I, I, so anyway, back to you. And I remember doing that. Like, you know, and, you know, here's another thing about like our like my vocation. So, you know, you you stand on a two inch thick plank two stories up in the air working with another guy it with no, one leg with one leg <laughs> you've got a safety <laughs> there's no safety rig in what i do like there's no harness there's no tie off i mean so you're trusting the guy when you can connect and share you know successes and positivity shoulder to shoulder and that's how i felt when i actually did what you said to search like, no kidding he made it yeah this is awesome well oh, praise but, god thank you guys for but it's yeah. all it's in its passion and it's doing what you do, doing what you do well. You know, you've got that, I've got that, you should get that. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and and you know, I think it was I mean, we're in a culture right now that is like 
meritocracy is like a bad word. And I honestly, it's a big word. It was like three months ago. I was like, what does this actually mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like not big on new terms that people just make up to make up something. But like, what are they saying? I mean, I grew up playing basketball and baseball and every sport. And it was about like, you won or you lose, lost. And if you won, you were a good sport. If you lost, you were disappointed, but you were right. a good sport. And you went on and you tried to make yourself better. Yeah. Why are we telling people, you're just okay? I mean, yeah, you're okay. But why are we telling people, like, if you achieve something great, that that, that is a lesser thing? Not that you're like, not that like, okay, we play basketball. I whoop your butt, right? Right. It, it's it's not like we shake hands and we're like, bro, that was a good game. Like, that's what it's about. I make you better. You make right. me better. You challenge me. We, right. you know, it's yes. not all about me. But, but, be the best you can be, man. Like, right. So, like it, the 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 professional group. I kind of lost the whole stone connection, but we'll come no, back no, to that. No, no. But my my stone is my life, and and stone is an analogy. And stone my, is my life. There's your T-shirt. Yeah, stone is my passion. I got <laughs> I've I have three loves in this planet and stone is one stoned of them. Stoned life. No, don't do that. No, and I that, well uh, yeah. Keep keep the stone jokes and all rocked. No, yeah. Just rocked. Everybody must get No. That's not that's not <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> but that, those jokes don't get annoying or anything. <laughs> Which is funny because I'm an extru a ninety percent a clean living dude, you know. I don't use tobacco anymore, thank God, and I hardly ever consume alcohol it's like oh you got a whole half half hour dude keep going you half hour yeah. i can do that but you know but when you go back to a stone crew when you're on a stone gang when you're in a professional order like i am and and you have these guys and you're living with them okay and it's not a flop house it's a family um you you sharing each other's successes and we're a little bit strange probably liking it too like military or special forces guys or my, my camaraderie right yeah, yeah, because again, you know, you're on a two inch thick plank and you're up there. Okay. I have literally been in those situations where if this board breaks, all three of us are dead. But mm -hmm. I've also been staying in the house and one of my best friends um, on the job and outside the job, three o'clock in the morning, I happen to be up and I hear this noise in his room and he comes busting out the door and he's like, She's going into labor. She's going into labor. And I'm like, Okay. Oh, she's going into. Oh, the baby's on the way, dude! I gotta go. It's like I'm here for that. Like it's a it's a tiny little, but it's a, it's a big thing. But it was right. a tiny moment, right? You know. Or I was on a job, and one of my uh, coworker, bigger word for coworker, I, brother. But anyway, this colleague of mine, this dear friend of mine, he gets a phone call. Hey, uh, dad died. These are the moments that I. For two, three, four years, right. sometimes right. I'm I'm with these guys, and it is very military. It's living life. living life authentically before people, yep. but you don't have to go on the road to do that. You can do that That's with right. buddies getting together, like we do, right on Friday morning, and we encourage each right. other, pray for each other, whatever. Right. Just you're talking about like coming. You're talking about being human. Yes. Yeah, and and then at the same time be like, human be human it, and men bond and suffer turn this podcast off and go live your life <laughs> wait we still have a half hour with james <laughs> but, you know people bond in suffering so it's not just like i go to work with these guys and then clock out and right. see you tomorrow and all that and and you can but you know the the best analogy i heard from somebody who lived it was uh when we do what we do it's like being on a ship cuz everything else is out there and we're you know, we're up there doing our task, and it's it's pretty heavy. But then you, even the guys I don't like, and there's a couple guys in trade I don't like, you don't get to pick your siblings. Mm. So mm -hmm. you still have to have a certain loyalty connection because you depend on each other. Right. And there's a they couple, just serve a job function. You serve a job function. There's interdependency in your professional in, life. Right. And it's like that. Yes. Dude, it's totally life like that in any job yeah. where we work together Right. previously right yeah you yeah. learn to function and, now, and maybe over time your relationship grows sometimes mm -hmm. it does sometimes it doesn't and if you know and if so and so doesn't do his job and then my project gets behind uh if things aren't properly run right maybe i don't get paid on time or they don't get paid on time or th this thing has to be torn out so everybody's kids everybody's wives everybody's mortgage it all becomes kind of interdependent even if you're the carpenter i'm the stone guy he's the, right you know and and we need to look at our life that way because it's it's like tribes and in what you're passionate about, 
you care about your neighbor over there and you care about if their barn catches fire or we see smoke coming up over right. there, we run to help them and they run to help us because we're all... We're, communi- it, we're a community. Yeah. Okay, so you're talking about... Okay, this is maybe a good point. Then I got to ask you about the stone transfer from one job to the next. We got to get back to that. Remind me. Um, guys, remind me. Okay, so, <laughs> so you're really talking about this whole concept of community. Right. We're going to have to come back and talk about observational awareness. But uh, this whole idea of community, like the smallest microcosm of community, mm-hmm. well, I mean, I believe in Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in God, so there's a community there. There's a community of believers right. around that. I have community in my family, first with my right. wife, then my children, then my grandchildren, then it spawns off from there. We've got, we've got community with our neighbors and community with, our, with the people in our, in our town, right. in our city, in our region, and in our, in our workplace. So we have all these like right. communities within community, right? Right. Or opportunities for it. And if you don't have those, you need to find those because you yes. will not... You will not thrive otherwise. And, and, you know, I think one of the best moments in my life was... Does that make sense? Totally. Okay. Totally. Authentic community. I love the word authentic authentic, community. Legit. Sustainable. Yeah. And one of the best moments, I think, in my life was where there's a a guy in the trade that we've we've shared not so positive (laughs) words with one another. We almost went over the hill. I can imagine that. Yeah, we almost went over the hill a couple of times. I've heard some stories from you. (laughs) And... You know, he and I both agree that we don't like each other, you know, but at the same time, you know, we can't work unsafely. We got to, right, you know, right. and it's like, all right, I got to, I got to put that down. We're going up there. You know, we can't be counterproductive. You stay on your side. I'll stay on mine. And, you know, over the years, we've had a couple of beers together and kind of put aside, but I, we mutually agree that we don't care. Okay, fine. I'm a jerk. Okay. You're, you know, <laughs> but, but it's like, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to lose any sleep over the We facts. have some irreconcilable differences so right now, but we can still professionally get our jobs right. done. Right. And if, if you We can set that aside I, uh, to get our jobs done. Right. Right. And that's, I think that was one of the best moments and it took that experience to to you know come out mm. and i think like he had some good points and he admitted i had some and so you we, actually had a conversation with him about why you hate each other oh yeah okay <laughs> oh yeah because that it, takes some guts we were, most people don't do that we honestly were, we were gonna go over that if hell. you know somebody hates you just say dude have i offended you in any way i mean that's could be the most helpful thing you could say we were we were gonna go over the don't hell. say hey why are you such a jerk <laughs> say hey i apologize if i offended you is there something that i i've done we, uh, you did that of course you want you approached him like that right we, no, we were going to go over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and the expression is... I'll bet you have a pretty good right hook. You're pretty lanky and tall. Well, you know, stonemasons are dangerous people to get in fights with because we swing hammers all day. Mm. Good point. <laughs> right. and, it's, and it's sharp and it's on the end of a handle about that long. Yeah, but, at the, right. but at the same time, you know, you get along better when you've got that connection to, okay... Um, you have a common bond in the stone. Common no? bond in the stone, and then a common bond in, you know, I spent two weeks on one job, and I was close enough to my coworker and colleague that I could touch his bed. We all we were all sleeping in the same room. I mean, it, I I hesitate to use the the military analogy because I don't want to sound like you know that guy. That, That's okay. Go ahead. You know what I mean. Go ahead. I gave you a perm- as a former marine, I'll give you permission. But communal living and communal suffering and communal eating, which would be the the boot camp experience. Uh, from a 4F guy, um, you know, there's there's an obvious similarity there without trying to sound tactical, you know, or whatever. No, it would have been the same as like the like the uh, CCC camps back in... Good right? one. Right? Good one. Yes, there you go. See, that, that's a good neutral. Go ahead. Histor- historically, because like people don't... Uh, some people don't under- know what that means. Basically, the... the uh, Civilian Conservation Corps was yeah, that President was, Roosevelt during yeah, the Depression, and yep. going out and you know doing parks and different things like that, and, and building. And so guys came from all walks of life for these government jobs to do construction, and then most of the time they lived on site. So when they went to Yellowstone, they lived in these military camps. And they they were, literally they literally built every existing camp and probably trail in Pennsylvania. Right. Yeah. Right. Or restored it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you have people coming from all over the country, from different walks of life. Some had money, just wanted the experience. Others didn't have anything, you know. But uh, that, like you said, that whole communal living. So it's it's not just, oh, the job gets buggered up. It's, 
I know his wife's maiden name. I know how, you know, how far along she is. I've seen the pictures, um, you know, that, that sort of a thing. It, it, right. it becomes so much more important. And we don't do lick and sticky jobs. You know, it's like then our, our standards go up. Our standard of living goes up. Lick and sticky? What's that mean? Oh, uh, gas station work. You ever look at fake stone on a gas station? I, sorry, I just had to stop you. I've never heard that before. Lick and sticky. Okay, yeah, go, yeah. you go with it. Okay. Yeah. And it's all about the square footage, and it's not about, you know, a job done well. And, um, you know, that, that box store slam. That's not what I do. You know, I can do veneer, but if I do veneer, like the most recent job I did. So you're saying like lick and sticky is like a patchwork kind of like. Yeah, covering it. Covering it over, kind of like just just throw crappy wallpaper over a wall and say call it good. Yeah, and and, you know, if if you've worked in the trades and you're going into a store or something, you're always pointing out to your family all the bad work that's on the. Oh, right, right. Okay, Okay, yeah. Um, So, yeah. Okay, okay, so go ahead. So, I. But you know when you when you when you're in a community like that, then your work also starts to go up. When you're you have a discipline, uh, you know trucks get cleaner, books get better. So everybody's standing on each other's shoulders, kind of like thing. Shoulder, like you're you're buoying each other up. Yeah, in yeah, your yeah. Work. It's like you know, and, and you can take. It's like a team. It's it, like a it professional. It is a team, but it's, it's a also team. a family because it's like I've got a personal emotional connection to the guys I've worked with that I'm closest to. You know, right? I know the kids' birthdays. I know. The, 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 what, okay, so former Marine, you know, you've been in a foxhole. You've spent 24 7 together. You've vented to somebody. You know, you understand what's going on, pros, cons, all. And, and the other thing about us is we don't judge. So, like, for example, one of my communal experiences, everybody in the room um, had their own theology. And when you go from some some parts of the country where, you know, if you're outside the norm theologically, like if it's mostly this religion or that, you, and you're different, you're subject to judgment, where our standard answer is, why do you think that? If you can't think of something else, you think, why do you say, why do I think that? Mm-hmm. Learn. So, right, right. you know, it's like, why are you a Methodist? My last name's Asbury. Let's think about this. <laughs> 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 but, you know, then you have different people around the room, Seventh-day Adventists, two Catholics, there was an Anglican, you know, it's like, and we're all sitting around, we've all eaten, we've all worked hard together, and we just get on this topic of, so why do you think that? Okay, huh, maybe I don't agree with you, or maybe I have another question, but it's, and, you know, it's it's the same as with your thing, like one guy wants to build a cabin in a bunker out in the middle of nowhere, and somebody else is doing urban survival. People don't and, care how much you know until they know how much you care. Something like story. that, right? Yeah. 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 And, you know, so you get that family bond, that family connection that carries people want to be known, right? So when you engage in those conversations and you and you actually yeah. stop and listen. Yeah. Yeah. And there's so much to glean from others, especially when you've got a trade in common. But it's it, I got to emphasize, it's not just travel to for travel's sake and it's not just the work for the work's sake. You know, it's a it's a life. It's a philosophy. It's, a, you know. I'm in a new town. What have they done differently here to make their town better? Like, what principles can I take back to my own town? You know? Oh, this, this right, community. Right, right, Okay. This community started a fake holiday that was easy. It was, it was a town I visited and to up <laughs> chocolate day. Town I was in, they had chocolate day, and every business in town did something with chocolate. Chocolate's easy. Doesn't, it doesn't your chocolate. hometown up the road have some sort of weird... Don't they have like a cherry festival or something up there? Don't you guys have like something? Isn't there like a yearly summer? F- oh, you mean the little community where I live where the bandstand is? Yeah, that one. <laughs> the, un- the unnamed the, community. Oh, yeah. The strawberry festival and the ice cream social. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no joke. There's towns in Pennsylvania that still do that stuff. And like, what what is there? The population is like, I don't know, like. 400 or something yeah like 300 to- i think there's five cows to every one person <laughs> or something. but yeah yeah like it's it's those little things and then you take that idea back home but if you didn't mix that up right you know this is really interesting too because we have a lot of conversations so james is an advocate for this rural community that we live in in this this county like he he, lo- he loves it here but he goes out and so like like literally we have breakfast on Friday morning. He just, he like pops into the same restaurant and he's been sitting down with us. Right. So he's, he's gone all week. He comes home 
Uh, I guess Thursday night, probably, right? And then and then yeah. he sits down. So anyway, we've recently has started this whole conversation on like we're losing we're losing people and we're losing jobs. How do we right. how do we bring what I've seen in other places here? Right. So now I'm this is a continuing conversation we've had over the last couple of months. Now I see where you're coming from. Like you're seeing yeah. You're seeing growth and progress in other places, but how do we do th- that here with the people we have here, with the right. with the skills we with the infrastructure we have here? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So yes. that's actually like an observe back to our original topic, which we may or may not have talked about: <laughs> observational awareness. Like you're observing right. things and relationships and people and infrastructure, and you're coming back right. to where you call home and saying, you know. How do I utilize this for the betterment of my life and the lives of the people in my community? Right. Is and that kind of where you're coming exactly from? Exactly where I'm coming from. Okay. And then oh, that's cool. And then okay, it's, it's also... And it, had, it took a podcast for me to really understand you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and this is the thing about the intimate conversation on your porch versus, you know, say being, um, you know, at the diner table where we've got... You know, a bunch of other guys. Do you want more coffee? And right, 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 where right, was right. I? And, you know, Dude, maybe. we had like, we had nine or... Nine guys last week. <laughs> like, oh yeah, it's hard to it's hard to gel the whole thing together with that many right. guys. But anyway, right. yeah, and okay, yep. Yeah. It's um, it's different because this is nobody else is watching or listening to this. So this yeah. is a more intimate conversation. Yeah. This is this is going to be bigger than that boiling water in a bottle <laughs> in a video bottle you showed video. me. <laughs> and and that's there's another thing like you know okay so I grew up in the boonies and when I'm not here, literally I, the boonies yes yeah, so actually go to the boonies and then take the dirt road to the right but <laughs> I can't tell any hillbilly jokes anymore because I don't think that's appropriate no it's not okay good well ahead. okay a few but <laughs> if you tell a hillbilly yeah. joke it's your town so <laughs> <laughs> okay go ahead well but then and then the other the other part of my life is I spend a lot of time in West Virginia that's why you can't tell hillbilly jokes uh, I'm not but <laughs> but you know I um, I love hillbillies. We're great people. <laughs> I wore shoes for this. <laughs> <laughs> and your but, feet are bleeding right now. I can see it soaking through your shoes. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But, you know, when, when we were first talking about, you know, your vision and, and the knives and the Bear girl stuff and all that, and I'm right, thinking, yeah. doesn't, ever, doesn't everybody already know this? Like, hasn't everybody, you know, spent a summer trying to make fire with a stick? Like, I took that for granted. Oh, that's interesting, right? I took for granted all these things that, you know, my parents had Foxfire books or what, what's the title? Is it Foxfire, Firefox? I can never remember. But these old books from the 60s, the Back to the Land movement. My, searching, searching, searching. <laughs> I thought I heard dial up somewhere. And that's, <laughs> it's okay when, when I ask my father a question, I, I hear a. Uh, um, you hear the gears grinding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear, I, <laughs> yes. Morse Dots code. And dash. It's like, wait, Dad. Okay. You lost me, son. But, <laughs> but you know those books, and then playing with that sort of thing. We all did that here growing up. But then now I'm aware. I'm more. I'm more open-minded. I mean, to you didn't wear shoes till you were what, thirteen or fourteen? Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is actually really interesting point that i've thought about a lot and i've kind of learned in being in business and like even now i'm trying to get better at this we have an intern hi ellie ellie's gonna be uh getting this video up for you guys uh we have we've got a 16 year old intern and she embodies she comes from a really great family right friends of ours they go to church with us she's right. the eldest daughter oh my gosh yesterday she wrote two two scripts for youtube yeah. shorts for me like she's She's nailing it, and she's 16, and right. like, shh, I'm not going to say she's the best intern, because some of our other interns might be watching this, but she's an amazing also, young, she's, she's an amazing, Ellie, you're amazing. Yes. Um, but here's, here's the thing, like, our experiences, and I think it's really important to realize mm-hmm. this, whether you're dealing with your wife or your husband, and... You know, you assume that they should know what you know or be looking at things from that observational perspective that you look at things. I would say just assume that they don't because I've come into this problem before. Like when I used to train and mentor Mm -hmm. people back in the day, I would be skipping and saying like, I know this, probably everybody knows this. And so I'm, I'm at stage two in their development or training. But then I realized that they don't, 
they don't have the basics of like this is marketing right. and this is what we do this is design and here's the beginning point right. so now i'm with my grandkids and i'm like okay like my grandson wants to build everything and design all this stuff and everything and i'm like okay this is a piece of paper and this is a pencil this is a ruler this is a protractor this is what it does this is why we use graph paper to start you and draw lines and this is a circle template and this is a compass now we're going to put these two lines together this circle this curve and another straight line and what is this that's a knife right so we take people exactly. we we need to maybe the observational thing in like a relational mm -hmm. sense is like asking exploratory questions before you assume that somebody knows right the topic or the starting point that you're coming right about even like terms like Ex what does meritocracy mean to you <laughs> like you know like i don't know what that means to a, you that's a huge one because when i travel people use different terms for i'm not sure what that means can you explain that to me or what does that mean to you right it's well because when i say liberal or conservative or i say i say i don't know something else it may mean something completely different. I may see freedom. Like, well, what does freedom mean to you? Well, there's, that, there's, yeah, there's that, and then that's well, just the simplest example. Or, like, well, if in a relational sense with people. Um, <laughs> go ahead, uh, you go, you go. Like, oh my goodness, don't you hate it when you're trying to think of an example, and I'll think of it after the camera goes. It's a off. Softball. I just, I just right. threw you a softball. But home yeah, run. Um, <laughs> you know, it's what, what is, you know, what is this object called? Right. You know, and when I go to a completely different state or on a completely different crew, they might use a terminology or, or say, get the thing. Just even regional it's things. Just yeah. a different word. Um, you know, uh, a, uh, a, I've heard, uh, okay, so a drop deck trailer. Like if I've got a piece of machinery coming for a job, yeah, uh, the low boy, the drop deck, the step deck, it's all different words i've heard for the same kind of detached trailer that is right. bringing my machine like the drop you, you're sending that on a drop deck drop deck is you know is that rigid trailer that depends on where you are right possum bottom i heard when i was in georgia like who's huh <laughs> you know but um leak ramp all these woodchuck groundhog i mean oh right, right. yeah you know to, to make That's it why we have Latin names for, for plants and animals, right? <laughs> so we all know what we're talking about. I was so the problem is you got to learn Latin, you know, all the Latin names, which are complicated, and, and then but he, very specific. And then when you... When you uh, so what you're t talking about is you're talking about kind of like first stage communication and, and establishing a common ground somewhere mm -hmm. with this new person or this person right. that you're developing a relationship right. and community with. Right. Right. Yeah. It's Don't be afraid to ask questions. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Right. That 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 baseline of, you know, first encounter understanding, to to you know truly explore. Well, maybe they do know exact, but they're using different terms. You know, they just called it a whistle pig, not a groundhog. Right. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of goofy, yeah, yeah. but. Yep. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It m makes things go that much quicker down the road when you're establishing rapport or when you're connecting. Okay. Now we're going to connect some stones. So each job you, you take a stone away oh, yeah, to the there. next job. Like yes. explain that. Like do you actually utilize it in the next job yeah. or is there some like oh, yeah. symbolic significance to well, this? Both. Both. So yes. Yeah, so all, and if both. you don't know what we're talking about, rewind, rewind to, uh, uh, 24 minutes. So, <laughs> so terms, terms and, uh, terms of whatever. So when you build a stone wall, especially a dry one, there's a lot of smaller material inside the Good. wall. Good. You're taking us back to the beginning. Yeah. Good. So we all are on the same page. Stacking your talents. <laughs> but packing, harding, filling, these are all terms for those small stones, but it depends on where, oh, yeah. where you're working. So you get the harding, you know, you're establishing what you mean. But usually the stones I take on is generally a piece of harding or packing, which is only about so big. Okay. And then... You know, that goes in my sea bag, which I've learned to live out of a sea bag, which is 10 times better than a suitcase. And, you know, then the, a piece of packing, harding from this job goes on to the next one. And it, like I said, that, that symbolizes to several of us this one walk. We call it a waltz, but this one waltz through. And look at me where I started and look at me where I'm going to end. Okay. 
Then when I get to the end of it, then if my kids don't take my tools, they bury them. But that's another topic. That's a little. Do they put them in a wall? No, you bury it in the ground. You just bury it in the ground. You bury it in the ground. Oh, really? So it's kind of like, so this is sort of kind of, it's, it's like a, is it like a creed or something? Or is it just like the unwritten, like this when is I'm what. done, my gear, when I'm done. Is done, this in your will? Yeah. Really? Take my, my tools and yeah, bury them? Yeah, if my them? boys ain't, if my boys or my friends aren't going to use my kit, my hammers, my chisels, my wedges, my traveling kit, it gets buried. Dude, that's, that's, that's this actually, I think that's really cool. This is done. Um. And I have, I'm like an emotional talking about this, I've got some mentors and colleagues that can no longer work, but rather than burying it, they gave me their kit. So a guy... Oh, wow. So it carries on, right? So, yeah. So I have a... a, a <coughs> Go with this. I like, yeah, this, I like this whole, like, kind of <laughs> paying it forward <laughs> tradition thing. So one of my... Go with this. I like yeah, it. Yeah, well, one of my mentors... We'll talk uh, about observational awareness next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, this, but this is observational okay. awareness because right. it's the passing on of tools. It's right. the passing on of info. Bring it, man. Info. Bring it. Okay, oh go ahead. Go ahead. Goodness, I'm getting all tied up here. Oh, you're getting teary-eyed on me, too, so that's okay. Uh, that's okay. This I is, needed a break there, but... This, this, this is the manly podcast. You can get this teary-eyed. Is, this, is, this is heavy, and if it doesn't carry weight with a guy over his trade, then... Maybe you aren't as passionate as you thought, but one of my mentors uh, called me up and I was headed out on a huge federal job and he said, come over to my house. Like, okay. So I showed up and he said, come in the garage. Okay. So I go in the garage and he closes, closes the garage door. He turns around and he is tearing up. He had been injured to the point where he could no longer work. So he couldn't go out. And when I say he did big jobs, I mean, his jobs were famous, were ridiculously famous. Hmm. But he remember I knew him from my first years, so he was always giving me passing on information stuff. Oh, he wow, observed, wow. Okay. okay. Yep. We'd had a lot of coffees. I'd been he'd straightened me out more than once. You know, he was always honest with me, respectful. It was that whole apprenticeship thing. Oh man. He's like, here. Yeah. So he had his dad's tools. His son is not going to do this. He's not letting his son live this life. So he had his father's kit. He's like, take this. Oh wow. So you're like third gen then, yeah, on it yeah. at least. Yeah, and I mean, some of them are oh. stubby, and I can't sharpen them anymore. Like they're like a pencil, you know, the, the handmade chisels that got down to. So I can't. Dude, that's really sweet. They're under yeah, the yeah. seat of my truck. Okay, but it's it is heavy because it's like I don't want to bury this. So here, mm, mm, mm-hmm. go take the life out of this thing. Okay, and I throw that in my in my sea bag, and people are like, "What do you got like ninety chisels for?" That was his. Dude, that was dude, his. Dude, I have an idea. What's that? If you have enough metal left. So, guys, subscribe to the channel because Joe, Joe's been on the channel, my buddy Joe. We got into knife making, like actual us making knives a couple years ago, and he's gotten really good. We're going to do a series on knife making, but our first video where we're going to take you like through, I don't know, eight or nine videos and show you how to make a, a cool knife out of a file why don't we reforge them into something you can use? We can anneal them, we can clean them up, and we could reforge them. That's heavy. Wouldn't that be cool? That's heavy. We should do that. That's heavy. Dude, I'd really appreciate that. That'd be really sweet. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys want to see us do do something like that, uh, just let us know in but the comments. Yeah, that's that's that'd be really cool. Well, I'd d- love to. Just remind me of it. I won't let you forget. I'll be texting you. (laughs) Hey, jerk. (laughs) But then you you go back to observance. I mean, this is like the observant mentality. This this is also passed down. It's like, you know, the first couple of years, you're learning to use your tools. But then when you get in with the right people and you're living the journeyman life, that's also passed down. Okay. It's like, okay, you're mature enough now. I want you to go out and see, like, one of the things that I do is I stay with people who are not stone workers a lot. But my, my typical way to live is... Uh, so, for example, I was in New York City. I'm staying with Matthew Stillman. He's the brains behind uh, the Iron Chef. Okay. You know, uh, kind of like JBS too, right? Code name. Uh, yes, JBS. <laughs> <sighs> it's for you to figure out. Yeah. This is top secret stuff. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Those people are interesting. But like you know, you know, staying with Matthew and um, in New York City and being immersed in what it's like to create a television show. Okay. Yeah. You know. The point is, he's not in my trade, you know, and that's that's the awakening. Or you're staying with a theologian, a politician, an astrologer, oh, a yeah, music yeah. teacher. Interesting. Um, hmm. 
you know, but you're you're not you're not just there to do a job. You're in their life. You're in their space. This you is s- interesting because what you're talking about is something that I think we need more of. Oh yeah. You're this is like the- anti tribalism. Like we're so tribal in our society, or at least the media or like the powers that be want us to be isolated and tribal. And what you're saying is you're kind of crossing over those yes. like intrinsic tribal barriers and you're creating another yeah. whole community. Well, I have, so we have, a are you, is that, am I off on that? I, I think is it something? No, you're right. It's just, so you have a tribe and you have tribes. Yeah. yeah. So like okay. you were saying about, you know, you go over here and appreciate what they do and you know, you interconnect and whatever. So it's like, yeah, I go to the city and then, you know, um, uh, there's a documentarian coming out this fall to follow me around, actually. Okay. How, how did I learn about that? By having friends that work in that world. So I'm not, uh, I'm not limited to the, the function of my vocation. I have, you know, I've, I've kind of mixed it up. It's like, hey, I want to promote where I live. I want, you know, I, somebody calls me about doing a documentary, and it's like, okay, well, I want to show where I live and the stuff I've built here. Before we go out right. there, I'm going to show you my base. And so, and, and to go back, you might have an area like where we live has a certain way of being and there's a certain set of whatevers and that's our bubble. You might go to another bubble. You will know where we live when you drive by everybody and they do this, whether they know you or not in their vehicle or whether they're walking down the street. Yeah. And if you don't wave at somebody, you could ruin their day. You could ruin their day. And the only other place that that's like is, you know, like out in Montana, Wyoming, because, you know, they don't see anybody all that. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, so you, but you have your tribes and you have your cultures and you have your cliques. But then there's, you know, you you shouldn't be like the village. Remember the village? Go ahead. Go with it. The the movie, The Village. Don't don't leave the village. The things of which we do not speak will get you. The monsters will get you. Okay. And it's. I don't know if I've seen that. Uh, Sounds kind of scary. I don't watch yeah, scary movies. M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. I only it's, a, it's a cheesy movie, but the whole concept <laughs> of don't leave the village. Okay. Like a cult almost. Almost like a cult. Okay. Yeah. But you know, that, uh, it's like going to, um, going to New York City. Why would you go there? Or, well, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just go get a factory job? I don't see myself doing that. Right. You know, right, right. Yeah. and and you know you've got these little pens in the world that that people tend to want you to stay in tribally. You have a very patient wife, too. Yeah, that's my that's uh, the other big love of my life. <laughs> I would actually give this up for her. I tried, but unfortunately, people will not let me out of this career. <laughs> my wife is. Does amazing. she have gloves? Will she travel? <laughs> my, yeah, my wife has a black belt and a master's degree in behavioral health. Okay. She could take both of us at the same oh, time. All right. And you know what's interesting? My wife and I don't agree on a, on certain things, but I think that that's what right, it's right. that okay. complementary. Yes. 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 I yes. don't but I don't win a lot of arguments at home. Where are we at? Oh. All right. We got to wrap it up. <gasps> we do. W- anything else you want to cover before we mountaineer.substack.com. Uh, well, I'm going to ask you that. <laughs> before we get to that, all right. Okay. So before we get to that, yeah, brother, let me know if you want to see James again on the podcast as a executive <laughs> co-host. Uh, to uh, why don't you go ahead? You think? Okay, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's up? Uh, favorite favorite book. Oh man. The End of the World is Just the Beginning. I think I've read that three times. Uh, Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. Helmet for My Pillow. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I know none of these books. (laughs) Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, man. You're in the Marine Corps and you don't know Helmet for My Pillow? Oh, man. I don't. Tell him why he's wrong. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'll check it out. Promise. I've got gonna, Audible. I've got lots you. of I've got lots of carryover credit credits. I just cashed in some books that were bummers that previous guests told me about, but I will get it. I okay, will, I will send you a link. Okay. Also, mm-hmm. what's your favorite survival knife? <laughs> My favorite knife. Now, 
uh, all, due, all due respect. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just. My, <laughs> hey, I, I wear, I carry a Leatherman wave all the time, except when I'm injured and have to wear my sweatpants. It's in my truck. My, all right, you can't mention it. Your second favorite knife. No, the my favorite knife is the one my boy gave me before he left for basic. <laughs> okay, so, so you don't you don't know what the name of the knife was? That's okay. We'll put it in the podcast notes. I think it's a case. Okay, I, okay. I, case Bradford. Yeah, they're right down the road. I met with those guys. I'm going to go do a tour there. They are one of the last great yeah. U.S. manufacturers of mm-hmm. pocket knives, and they're stepping it up. Go check out Case but friends. Friends there. Okay, and then. That's my number two. Oh, you're the pack one. Yeah, very durable, very handy. Okay, if you, you know. want, if you want to be on the show, and we <laughs> pick you, and James picks you to be on the show, I will give you Ooh, a pack one. I pick you like a rock. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, uh, last thing, how about a couple of takeaways for our listeners? Maybe tie it all together. A couple of takeaways. Yeah, takeaway. How can people take what we talked about today and apply it to their life today? Bro. Well, number one, okay. you find what you love to do, and you say, I can't believe I get paid to do this. You have said that to me quite a lot. I have said that uh, many, many times. <laughs> but if you can't believe you get paid to do what you love to do, i.e. picking rocks, creating content, hanging out with your buddy. <sighs> yeah, let me throw something in there with that, too. Yeah, man. Like, there's a lot... We still, we've got a lot of problems in our world, our country, whatever country mm-hmm. you're in. We have an international audience. But but we live in a time where there's so much opportunity. Every day there's even technologies that are emerging. Like mm-hmm. start a YouTube channel and do YouTube shorts, man. If, if they're any good, you could build yourself something there. But... Uh, some of you are. Some of you might have heard what James is saying. Here's what I wanted to get to. You may have heard what James is saying and saying, "Gosh, I work for, you know, I work for this three-letter agency or this big corporation. I cannot break there. I cannot lose my job. I can't. I I can't move away from that thing mm-hmm. to do what I would really love to do. It, again, we talked about plan earlier in this podcast." Come up with a plan, figure out how you can reduce your expenses if you need to do that. Get your family and your wife on board. Start mm-hmm. maybe a micro enterprise if that, the, in, you know, try to create some margin in your life. Yep. And try something. And if it takes off, you're going to know. Right. And I started Mountaineer Stone with a pile of rocks. I mean, I had a pile of rocks, a pile There's of There's a pallets. lot of rocks where we live. Yeah. And I was like, I, I just, I'm going to stack these and I'm going to, you know, just continue to do it this way. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, I didn't throw, uh, you know, $100,000. in. That a, wasn't your full-time job back then at all. No, I was working three jobs. Yeah. Because I was selling, was I selling auto parts then? And we worked together and right. something like that. Right. You know, but yeah, I've always, I've maintained multiple jobs. I the whole time. I mean, my journey was the same. I mean, I was working oh, yeah. at the uh, never to be mentioned on air company, uh, right. f- past Inc. One Hundred company that we worked for, right. and uh, started and this whole did a crappy YouTube video. I think it was twenty eleven. Wow! <laughs> wow! That was, what was that twelve years ago? Wow! And it. T- kind of took off and i did another one and it took off and then i got a call from gerber saying hey we saw these videos you did you guys want you got some knives to review and like that was that was you will never see those videos they're not on my (laughs) youtube channel but but it started from there it had some traction right and it just it had sort of kind of a life on its own and i continued to work at the company whose name we will never mention on air for the, like the company an, of which we do not speak. <laughs> this is really starting to sound like M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> uh, I worked there for like another year and a half, right? Until circumstances aligned, and there was kind of like, hey, we could, we could do this right. full time, and cut back here and there, right? So anyway, there you go. That's one. That's one. Go ahead and do, you know, take off. Do something you love to do. If if you want it to mm-hmm. be an income producing thing. You know, give it a shot and 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 maybe you're just passionate. Maybe there's no money in it, but maybe you're adding value to your community. 
You know, maybe okay. you love yeah. to paint, but the profit isn't in. You know, you got your real job. You so do keep your keep your big time exec job, make some margin in your life to serve your community and yeah. do what you love to do. And then who knows? Okay, yeah, yeah. Who I like knows, that. Man? I like this. Um, what else? Where were we? We were just on uh, like you know one or two or three takeaways from oh, what we it, talked about. There's that. Um, Stack some rocks. Then, it's good for you. Uh, well, and another big thing in our thing is taking care of yourself. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yo, this is huge. This I, is huge. I will never forget the first federal job I was on, and I came around the corner, and there's dudes in Carhartts doing yoga, which sets, I feel it sets us apart from the other trade life where it's just, okay, drive the nail on the board. Okay, you're spent, you're wore out, okay. you're fired. No, Are you going to cry again? Is it, uh, Dude, well, like, you're getting so emotional here. <laughs> I had EJ Snyder on here, and he was, like, crying. You got to the end, and he was like, that was the best podcast ever, dude. <laughs> I love your porch. I, felt- <laughs> I love your porch, man. <laughs> no, but, like, uh, you know, in, in taking care of yourself, you know, and it's, you know, maybe it's not. You go ahead and cry. Whatever. You're a manly Do man. Do I think like I'm cry. still going to cry? And real men can cry. Well, yeah, like, you know, if I smash I'm my I'm crying. Thumb, That's why I have this, the sunglasses on, dudes. If I smash my thumb with a rock, yes, I'll cry. Okay, you go with it. I totally yeah. interrupted you. But y- You're getting nasty <laughs> comments right now. This is why we're friends. <laughs> David, but, shut up and let James talk. You know, taking care of yourself is just another form of planning. So important. You know, what you eat, what you put in your system, whatever. Um, you know, I mean, you get the idea. It's a discipline. It's it's no different. Discipline. Than we were going to talk about observational so awareness disciplined. and discipline. There you go. <laughs> Next time on the Survival Show See, podcast. And this is why I have job security. <laughs> A couple of takeaways. That was the thing that was missing. We literally have been talking about this. He sent me a text like a week or so ago mm-hmm. with like these couple ideas. Like, yes, observational awareness, discipline, and the journeyman's life, and. And all this, and then we forgot what it was, and he he shut off his phone. So we we just kind of cobbled together some notes, which we didn't even need. That's right. You have notes. Bam. <laughs> Dude, thank this you. Thank you so much for being on here. Tell people all the places they can find you. If, if there's a place they can go look at your work, too, I think people, if it's summer, it's going to be summer here. Yeah. Soon, oh, if uh, you, you want to. They can see some of your work. If you're in the Williamsport area, you can go to the Pennsylvania College of Technology and see my work at the Earth Science Center. Nice. Um, which uh, that's South Williamsport, just over the hill from Little League World Series area. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's probably my most famous. If you're in, I get gas at sheets there all the time when I come through. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Better than back in the day when we had to eat at Clyde Peeling's Reptile <laughs> Land as <laughs> students. <laughs> like, if you want to see my work and you're in Fairfield, Pennsylvania, you can go by the Fairfield Carmelites Monastery uh, just south of Gettysburg Town. Um, hmm, where else? A lot of private property. You're doing a lot down there, kind of like in the Gettysburg, Adams Northern County, Maryland. Uh, County. Carroll County, I did the, uh, I didn't, do, I wasn't the boss on the job. I was one of the Masons on a job. Um, the uh, Wounded Warrior Park in Carroll County. Uh, I'm trying to think what road that was on. But we did a whole bunch of dry stone work, me and a bunch of my buddies. And I, w- I was just a guy on the job. It wasn't my job. Um Good grief, where else have I been? And if people want to hire you, you're booked for like the next three years, right? Things can change. you got to be flexible. But yeah, <laughs> uh, mountaineerstone.com is my website, and uh, mountaineer.substack.com is my blog. And I'm messing around with a YouTube channel, but... It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Dude, it's a lot of work. I've people, learned a lot. People have no idea until they... Until but they get to the point where they, back here they email the me. Cameras. I can't tell you how many times people have emailed me and said... David, can you look at my YouTube t- channel and tell me what I'm doing wrong? <laughs> well, yeah. Actually, another place it's, you can see tough. my work. Um, the uh, good. I was just stalling so you could Smythe come up with this one. You got Smythe, oh, Smythe Park, Park and the uh, the gatehouse where they're restoring the historic gatehouse affiliated with the very first. And that's in Blossburg, Pennsylvania, right? Mansfield. Mansfield. Oh, okay, where's that? Tioga County. Okay, Tioga County. Cool. I did nice. that job. Nice. And then where else have I been? I did a ton of restoration last year. I got to work on the uh, retirement home of Al Capone, but that's a that's a gated community thing. <laughs> right, right. That's awesome. So uh, give us your stu- substack one more time. Mountaineer.substack.com. All right. Yeah. Cool. Dude, you want to come back and do this again sometime? Oh, heck yeah. This is great. Sweet. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. 
yeah. Um, it's great. Go ahead and pay it forward. If you got some people that could benefit from this podcast or any of our other podcasts, go ahead and pay it forward. Share it with them. Like, subscribe to the podcast. Subscribe uh, wherever you listen, wherever you're seeing this. Uh, we would really appreciate it. Go visit Ultimate Survival Tips. Dot com. That's actually like kind of what pays for it. I mean, you were kind of surprised. Like we're literally shooting this on iPhones and on my porch, right? On a beautiful, beautiful day. He's kidding. This is a green screen. We're in a studio <laughs> in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> but even even just to do this, you were amazed me hobbling around. Yeah. And it took like an hour and a half just to set up this. So it takes time. Uh, well, if you weren't dumb enough to break your leg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, talking about taking risks, right? <laughs> so anyway... Uh, I really appreciate it if you pay it forward. If you find something on the website you like, just you know, go ahead and email us at the email on the website, and we'll work something out for you so you can get the gear you want. Uh, all right. Until next time, uh, be positive, stay sharp, and we'll see you next time on the Survival Show podcast. Thanks for joining us. Stay well. <laughs>